Core, and uh, we're going to get started now. So I'm going to pass it on to you, uh, Nitu, and I'm, I'm going to be monitoring the chat right now. Okay, thank you so much. So the today's topic is on academic integrity for distance learning. Now, another thing Priscilla told me about, you know, sometimes people uh, get confused between uh, online and distance learning. They are two different things. Online uh, and distance learning, uh, we kind of very, you know, close. But uh, another element could be distance learning can also be, you know, some of the portion can also be little offline also. So offline and online combination of both. So today I'm going to discuss about the challenges that we have. Um, so I am the host again, right? Oh, oh, I think I should, let me turn it over back to you. Hold on a second. There you go. Okay, thanks. So yeah, so this topic I um, wanted to discuss with you because many of you uh, might think that, you know, how can we sp stop cheating in an online class? You know, student can just Google the answer. So how do we stop that kind of, you know, uh, activity uh, so that we can maintain this uh, academic uh, uh, integrity? So yes, uh, it is very hard to control that thing in an online class, but it can be done. Uh, to a certain extent, although the ideal situation is having the online proctoring, but unfortunately we don't have that right now. We will be working on it. But at this moment where everything is so uncertain, we can do the best we can. So the agenda for today is um, what is the difference between in-person and an online class? Uh, most of you already um, uh, you know, uh, know that and also learning during this process and uh, the various challenges that um, you will be facing maintaining uh, academic integrity in an online class, then what we can do about it? Is there are options available to control cheating uh, and maintain the honesty? And what are the options that our college provides us and what are the colleges CUNY provides us? So we are going to discuss about those options and then we will see how Blackboard can help us in those areas. Now, some of the situation uh, that happens in an online class is that unless and until there is online proctoring, there is no way you may know that if the person who is doing the assignments or the person who is taking the test is the same person who is, who is enrolled in the class, right? So, for example, somebody, you know, um, uh, as Mr. X signed up for a class, you know, but, you know, somebody else is taking test on behalf of that student. How do we know? You know, there is no way unless and until there is online proctoring. Uh, how do we make sure that students are not Googling the answer? There is no way to know that. And how do we know that students are not colluding? Two, three students are taking the test together, sharing the question. You do four, I, do, I will do four. So how, how do we know they are not colluding? And how do we know that uh, the students are not getting help from somebody else? You know, they are just doing by themselves or they are getting help from somebody. And um, it's also a possibility, you know, in the term paper and in the written assignment about the plagiarism. Plagiarism is can, it can happen even otherwise. That is not exclusive for online learning. But all other um, uh, areas that I discussed with you, those are the areas that really is a concern in an online class. But it is, because it is very hard uh, to, uh, first of all, figure it out if something like this uh, that is happening. And if we do know that something like that is happening, then um, what, what we can do about it? So first of all, the most ideal approach is online proctoring, but we cannot do online proctoring for everything. We can just limit that to the test, but we don't have that facility right now in our school. So I'm going to talk about all those areas. So the difference between uh, in-person class and online class is uh, the kind of interaction uh, so in uh, in-person class, you meet with the student, right? And you see them on regular basis, like weekly basis, uh, you know, every twice a week or something. And you get to know them, you know, as a person. They know you as a professor and you get to know them. 
So you uh, know that the person who is coming in the class um, and doing the discussion in the class, uh, participating in the class, doing the class quizzes or any kind of group activity in the class, all those students, you know, you know them there because they are coming there on a regular basis. But we don't know the same thing in an online class. You know? So like I said, you know, um, uh, we don't know if the person who's taking the test is actually the same person who's, in, who's being enrolled. So the kind of interaction is different. The role of technology plays a very important role. The, there are face-to-face -face classes where you don't even need uh, any kind of technology. You can do without it. So there is, a, not, I mean, not necessarily you have to use it. You can use it, but um, you can do without it also in many courses. The group work is easier in the class setting, but it is a little harder to do that in an online platform. Presentations are also in a uh, classes easier because uh, the sitting arrangement uh, and you have that kind of setup. But to do the presentations um, in an online class, uh, it's doable, but it's not going to be as equivalent to in-person class. And submitting the assignments, uh, especially for math courses, you know, and the courses, uh, science courses that has a lot of graphs, even many other courses, statistics, you know, and the, where you have like, you know, any graph or math kind of, uh, you know, homework. So uh, to submitting those assignments into the Blackboard and, you know, that can be a challenge. Even for the student to write all those formulas and equations, you know, can be a challenge. So it will be easier for them to write on a paper, you know, and just scan it and submit. So those things can be done. And then another difference is that classwork, you know. So you can give like, um, you can, you know, give a quiz in the class, you know, to learn what, you know, if the students are understanding what you are teaching. Uh, you can, uh, you know, give them like um, like an oral quiz. You can ask them, give them like on paper. You know, there are so many things that you can do. So these are the differences. There are more, but these are the major areas pertaining to my topic, uh, academic integrity. So I'm going to um, move to my next slide. So as I discussed with you, the challenges that we face uh, maintaining the academic integrity in an online class, the first thing is that um, the identity of the person is very hard you know, to uh, make sure that the person is the same who is enrolled in the class and the possibility of colluding if they are getting help from an outsider or you know, uh, if they are cheating over the internet. And uh, there is a website, you know, uh, websites, I would say, you know, where the student can get answers on demand. So there is a website called as check.com. Uh, I'm sure you must have heard it, like Quizlet, Course Hero, you know, all these websites. Uh, some of these websites actually uh, let the student ask the questions on demand. So if you open a test for like two hours, the students uh, can, you know, just ask those questions from that. Uh, you know, from the, one of those two tutors who remain available, at least some tutors remain available all the time to be, to be able to answer those questions. And their answers are not bad. Uh, I have, my, my, from my own experience, one student who caught cheating, his, uh, the answers provided by the tutors definitely deserved like a B, you know, B plus or something. So it's not like that they provide poorly answered. They, they, they know what they are talking about. I wouldn't say they were A, but they were definitely a B or B plus. And then, um, it is also, you know, uh, in the online class, how you can make sure that students are closing their book or closing their notes. There's no way you can do that. But in the in-person class, absolutely, because you are right there. You can make sure that the students are not using their book. They are not using your notes, you know. And I would also like to bring to your attention that whenever, you know, and also to the college community that whenever we are talking, you know, comparing the face-to-face -face and online class, uh, we have to keep in mind that all the face-to-face -face students, mostly, they take like proctored tests. They take the like, proctored quizzes, right? But in the online class, you know, because we don't have any online proctoring services, the students, you know, nobody is going to monitor them. Nobody is going to proctor them. And we don't know if they are using their book or they are, you know, using their notes. Sometimes I feel that it is not fair you know, for the face-to-face -face student, you know, to be taking the test in a proctored setting. On the other hand, their online counterparts, you know, are able to take tests without any proctor, open book, open notes. I sometimes think that how fair that, can, that is not fair, right? So that is a long time discussion, you know, like long-term discussion. Uh, there is uh, so much discussion to be done uh, in those areas. But as of now, what we can concentrate is what we can do right now. 
So uh, with that being said, I'm going to discuss with you the options that are available uh, to intact the academic integrity in an online class. There are options uh, and there are more options than what I'm showing you here. There are many more. So to summarize the major options that we have uh, in today's online world, one is called as lockdown browser. So lockdown browser is, um, is, a, is a way where the student, when they start an online test, uh, they will be logged into that screen. So uh, for example, they cannot open another window uh, to look for the answer, but you know, it is not very much helpful because student can have multiple you know, uh, devices, they can try, you know, try to look for the answer on their cell phone, they can try to look for the answer on another tablet or something. So if they have two devices simultaneously, then lockdown browser doesn't really help. So lockdown browser, you know, provides some kind of uh, support, uh, but it is not necessarily, you know, is going to serve all the purpose. Then the second option no. is most effective is the online proctoring option which also has its pros and cons, uh, but it does provide the most effective way of, you know, uh, controlling any potential cheating in an online class. But at this moment, we don't have any service like that in our school, but many other CUNY colleges, actually I made this presentation in CUNY IT conference in December, 2019. Uh, there are many other CUNY colleges who are already ad uh, adapting uh, such services. There are several companies who provide such services uh, and, uh, you know, uh, that can be used, but that is a long-term project, you know, it is not possible to implement that right now. Uh, so, but I'm letting you know that option is there. Then, uh, if the student, uh, don't want to, uh, you know, do the online proctoring option, they can also go to the testing center. Unfortunately, we cannot do that as well because the college is closed. Only essential people are allowed to go there and, uh, also to keep everybody safe. It is also very effective. Uh, so that also, you know, another thing that we can think about in the future, that online student, at least for the test, they can come and take the test in the testing center, or they uh, use one of the online proctoring options that the college provides them. Then uh, the final thing is that we can do. So we cannot do number one, we cannot do number two, we cannot num do number three right now. But I'm still letting you know so that in the future, if you do want to teach online class, you know, these are the options we can talk about. Uh, um, we don't have uh, number one and number two in our college, but number uh, number three, we can somehow, uh, you know, discuss and that can be done to some extent, I hope. But number one and number two, that needs like more discussion and implementation, writing the proposal, getting it approved, uh, you know, convincing, you know, why we need it. Uh, so we have to make those kind of arguments to be able to process any further, but I'm going to work on it. So as of now, in this current situation, uh, to maintain uh, the academic integrity and to prevent cheating, I'm going to show you some of the Blackboard tools that you can use. But keep in mind, it is going to be effective only for a certain extent. Nowhere, you know, they are, uh, you can control everything. Only very basic things you can control. But at this point, whatever you can control to, you know, uh, control the cheating, uh, I think that's, uh, you know, that's, um, that's still, you know, something is better than nothing. So I will, I'm going to talk about those options. So going to my next slide. So what you can do in the blackboard to prevent cheating. So the first uh, suggestion I give you is that when you set up a test, then uh, you give the test at a specific time and a day. So what I do is, you know, even though if I teach online class, I, uh, you know, let my students know right in the beginning of the course that I will have three exams in this class. And these three exams will be held on this date, this date, and this date. And I'm going to let them know also the timing. So for example, I tell them uh, your exam is going to be on Sunday. Uh, so let's say this coming Sunday is going to be 22nd. So I let them know right in the beginning of the course that your exam is going to be Sunday. March 22nd between 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, just be there on time. Uh, so everybody uh, need to be there uh, at that time to take the test. Now, the reason I don't want to make it like uh, available for the whole day, what happened is that student can collude. Like some student can take the exam in the morning and then share those questions with somebody who takes in the, in the afternoon or in the evening. 
so the you know that is that can uh, lead to potential cheating so that is the reason it is important that to give the exam at a specific day and time now the good news is that because you all uh, were you know those who were teaching face to face classes you do have a dedicated time uh, when the student you know they were coming to the class and you would have given the exam at that time to those student anyways so you can give the exact you know the, the exam at, exam at the exact time uh, when you had the class so that they can remain available and take the test so that is one of my suggestion now there can be situation where you know student can have emergency or you know there, there there is something you know then in that cases you can just accommodate you know some of those requests depending upon how valid you know their requests are now second thing you can do in the blackboard is you can have timed exam which highly recommend uh so i normally uh, have my exam like for one hour uh you know and um, i give them uh, you know i let them know how many questions i i am going to give it to them and what will be their time how many attempts they will have so my suggestion is to that uh, let them complete everything in one sitting uh, because there is an option in the blackboard where the student can just save some of the answers and then you know just close the window and come back and start again but you don't want to do that for the test assignment it is fine but for the test if you do want to if you do that then what will happen is that you know they will be able to use uh, you know that time in between to look for the answers you know elsewhere or get some help now the next is randomization of the question so if students are taking the test if they are sitting together for you know uh then they can uh, share you know they can just do what is answer for number 1 what is answer for number 1 everybody selects that so instead of you know that you can randomize the question for that you will have to create a pool and i'm going to show you how to do that then another suggestion i would like to give is uh, you might want to create your own questions believe it or not most of the uh, you know um the publishers you know like uh, uh, generic uh, i mean no, i'm uh, like popular publishers they their test bank uh, on, you know questions are there online most of them i have you because i teach economics and most of the popular book in economics you know their question test bank question uh, are there online you just you know cut and paste and you will see the answer you will be surprised you know so that answer is there most of them so you if you use the test bank from the book you know and if you are giving the test uh, using that test bank then student will be able to find those questions very easily fractions you know uh, so they will be able to find in a fractions of you know minutes and they will in within few seconds they will be able to find then another suggestion is that release of feedback only after the due date because if you uh, let the student see the feedback right after they finish they might be able to share that with other students so that way the student who took earlier they will be at disadvantage so that is another thing you might want to keep in mind now you want to show one question at a time the reason is that you know uh, they cannot uh, uh, they cannot just you know download all the question in one attempt and send it to somebody you know uh, and then that person you know solve it for them so that is uh, another you know way you can stop cheating so these are the you know various tools that the blackboard provides but by all means all these tools cannot cannot guarantee if the student who is taking the test is the same student who is enrolled in the course uh you cannot see if the student is using the book or notes you cannot see if somebody is helping them you cannot guarantee any of that but as you can see there are certain things you can do but there is no way this is the ideal thing uh, the ideal thing is the online proctoring which we are going to talk after this whole thing is over uh but that is what you can do as of now now going to my next slide is what are the option are the other than the test so other than the test uh, one of my colleague uh, she teaches like um, spanish uh, and for her the problem is that uh, translation you know so student uh, if she gives a paragraph and she want to translate uh, she wants students to translate that into english there are translation you know software student can just put there it will be converted into no time you know they will be able to get that so what can be done in those situation is you can schedule oral test you can do th uh, that through B blackboard collaborate uh, you can do that through zoom uh, you know there are options that, that you can use uh, 
uh, you can have appointments with the students and let them know you are going to have the oral test. For example, if you have two hours class, you can have like, you know, uh, five minutes or, you know, 10 minutes each. You can do something like that. You don't have to do in one week. Maybe you can do in two weeks. Uh, so that kind of test can be given to the Blackboard, collaborate. Or if you don't, uh, if you don't find it user friendly, you can also use Zoom. Then you can also have the student record their audio presentation or their video presentation so that you know they are working on it. Uh, then for uh, the written assignments, um, you can use the options like safe assign and turn it in option. I discussed about the safe assign and turn it in option in my uh, workshop yesterday. So the that is available in case you want to know. So the, this is thank you, but I'm going to, uh, you know, show you the Blackboard, uh, how to use all those options. So I'm going to go to this, uh, you know, CTL course, and I'm going to show you, um, how to create the test with all the features that I told you. So I'm going to go to this test. So to create a test, there are two steps. Step number one is you need to first create the test. Now, once you are done creating the test, you're not done yet. The second step is you need to deploy it. So first of all, let us do step number one in which you will be creating the test. So I will be creating a test. So cl click on create. So this is, let's say exam one. This is your exam one for the students. If you want to write some description, I write based on chapters one, two, three, and four. So this test exam is based on chapter one, two, three, and four. And then what I did, I hit submit. Now you are not done yet. Now what we do is there is no question now. We have to add the question. So now because if you never use Blackboard before or you use very limited, you know, then what I suggest is you create your own question. So let's say we want to start with multiple choice question. So we have this multiple choice question and I'm going to ask uh, what happens when government prints too much money. So this is my question and I'm going to give them, you know, few options. It causes inflation or it causes deflation. You know, something like that. Uh, nothing. Everybody gets rich. That's a funny answer. Everyone becomes rich. So I then hit submit. So this is one of the questions that I created, as you can see. Now you can also create other type of questions. For example, you can create essay type of question, either or numeric question for math professors. You can create, you can also have fill in the blanks. You can have jumbled sentences, hotspot, matching, multiple answers, multiple choice, and uh, short answers, true, false. As you can see, there, there is a list, right? You can choose any. So let me create like some more. So I have, um, let's say, I'm going to create a short answer. In the same test, you can have different kind of question. So how is this workshop going? So you, you know, so you, the answer students can type the answers here. So I'm going to submit. So as you can see, this is the second question, right? So now I, let's say these are the two question. You can keep adding as many question as you want. Uh, once you are done uh, adding the number of question that you want, now, you have to go to the second step. The second step uh, is where you deploy the test. So, so far you have done only step number one. You have to do the step two now, which is deploying the test. Now here, as you can see, there is no content. So what I'm going to do is, I can also use this actually weekly assignment. I can rename it. I can rename it assignments and test. So it will now show like this. So I'm going to go to the assignment and test, which I'm right here. Now again, go to the assessment. Assessment is whenever you talk, about, whenever you think about any test assignment, you have to look for the assessment. So you look for the assessment and then now click for the test. Now you see, don't you, have, you don't have to create a new one because you already created one. 
So you, all you need to do is add an existing test. So this is the test we just created. Remember those two questions? So that is the test we created. So exam one, that we named that as exam one. And now we hit submit. So once we hit submit, now you will learn all the tools I was talking about. So this thing I already wrote, it automatically populated. Now, do you want to show the description uh, to the students before they begin the test? Yes, why not? You know, I want them to know that this chapter is based on these chapters. So I will check that option. Then we will go down and then you want to make the test available to the student. Absolutely. Otherwise, how they will take it. Whether you want to send an announcement for that test, I don't really care about it, but if you want, you can. Do you want to give multiple attempts to the student? I do give attempts for the homework, but I don't give that for the exam. So I will not select it because I don't want to give any additional attempts, just one attempt. But if for homework, you can. Um, so if you do want to give multiple attempts, you know, there is another option, which grade you would like to consider. So you can consider uh, maybe the highest grade out of the two attempts or you can just take the last graded, whatever you prefer. So that is up to you. But for the exam, I would avoid it. Just one attempt is good. Then you want to definitely want to do force completion. What does force completion means is that once the student starts the test, then they have to finish the test in one sitting. They cannot just save it and resume later. That is not a possibility. So you want to then, for the exam, you want to do that. Now set timer, how much time you would like to give for that test. So if it is 60 minutes, one hour, if you want to give more, you can do that. And you definitely want to do auto submit on. Why? Because the student, after they finish their time, 60 minutes, it will kick, kick them out. Uh, or if you want to give them extra time, you can give 70 minutes, but still keep this on, you know? So I do 70 minutes, even though I say it is one hour, I give them, you know, some extra time, but I don't give anything more than that. So anyway, so that's that. Now, after that, you can, uh, you can prepare your exam, you know, in advance uh, and uh, schedule it. So for example, I want to schedule this exam on Sunday, let's say 22nd, and I want to make it available to all the students at the same time. So let's say I'm making it available from 8 and then I'm going to make it available until 22. Everybody should be done no later than 10, let's say. So that is uh, the time I selected. You can also have a password. Uh, so that password, I don't care much about it because then you will end up getting so many emails. Professor, what is the password in case, even if you send it, they might forget or you know something might happen. They didn't receive the email or whatever. Now this test availability exception is for the student who need uh, you know uh, accommodation. So you can use this feature for those students if you want to give an extended time or another attempt to a student who had technical problems. Now the due date, uh, as we discussed, nobody should be, uh, should be able to take the test anytime after the 10 in the night. That is the time nobody can do after that. Then hit do not allow, uh, check this box, do not allow student to start the test if the due date has passed. So nobody will be able to take after that date. Now, do you want to include this in, in your grade center? Absolutely, because this is exam. This is a part of the grade. So you want to select that. Because if you select this, then it will not be a part of the grade. So you want to select this. This is all automatically checked. So make sure it is, it, it is on. Uh, then this is another important thing. After, uh, you, after the student finishes their test, what, what do you want them to be able to see? So I don't, I let them, don't let them see anything for the test. For the homework, I let them see this, but I don't let them see anything else until everything, everybody is done. Why? Because if you check this option, this is automatically checked. If you want to not want to give this to the student, you have to uncheck it. Otherwise, by default, it is checked. You, what does that mean is that after the, after the student is done, that student will know which question he got right and which question he got wrong. Mm -hmm. So that student can tell to another friend you know, of theirs, hey, this one the, the right, just select these options, you know? So you want to uncheck that. If you are, if you don't care, you can select that. Now, you do want, if you do want the, the student to be able to see the right and the wrong answer after the due date, you can select this after availability end date. And you can select, you know, all the correct answers, what they got wrong, what they got right. I do that after the availability, I let them see it. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. 
Now you do want to randomize the question so that student, um, you know, don't get in the same order. So that is something you can do and then you can hit submit. Okay, uh, need to one second. Yes. Uh, the couple of people have asked, thank you for that very thorough explanation. A couple of people have asked related questions about this section. So while we're here, can I just uh, bring your attention to that? Yes. So one was about the hotspot and then the other question was about whether you can combine different types of tests in one test, like multiple choice, essay, etc. cetera. Uh, the hotspot? What is it? I did, I, did I say what? I don't know. Uh, okay. Mary uh, noticed that it was, I think it was an option for one of the test um, types. You want me to go to the power? A question type. It's a question type. Oh. Oh, in the in the in this one, right? That's what you mean. Okay, let me go to. I can go definitely go to uh, the course tools. If you want to see and edit your test, you can go to the test survey and tools. You click in there, you go to the test, and then you can edit this test, and you can uh, you know make more changes if you would like. So what was that? Hotspot. Hotspot. Okay. It's right in the middle. Yeah. I never what used is it. That's a good question. I never used it. <laughs> if you could send me an email, I will try to figure this out. Yeah, send me, if you can send me an email, I will try to see what, it, it sounds cool, right? Hotspot. Interesting, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, uh, not a big deal. So yeah. the other question that Kyoko asks is if you can combine different types of tests in under one test, like a multiple choice, essay, et cetera. Absolutely, that's what I did uh, in my test. Let me show that again. So okay. I go to the test survey and pool. I can create another test if you want. Let me show it right now, build the test. So I'm going to create, let's say, exam two. So exam two, exam one I already created. I wrote something, uh, description based on you know this information. Then, uh, then as you can see, I'm going to, uh, let's see hotspot, what is that? Why not? <laughs> Hotspot question. It does say like this, you know, question title and the question and upload image, maybe based on an image, something like that. Anyway, so what I was trying to say oh. is that you create one question. So let's say we create um, an essay question. So essay question, let's say question number one and write something question, uh, and, you know, information. If you want to uh, provide some feedback, student won't see this until they are finished or until the uh, availability date is over. So then you can hit submit. You don't have to uh, provide the answer if you don't want to, only if you have the time. Uh, so then you can hit submit. So my one question is ready, as you can see, that was as a question. Then I'm going to create a multiple choice question now. So in the same test, I have one essay question. And now my second question is a uh, multiple choice question. So my answer is one. Let's say one is the right answer. Make sure you uh, make sure this blue thing is in the right one. Uh, so if your option B is right, you will have to manually go to B like that. So let's say B is the right answer. So number two, number three, and number four. So now we hit submit. Now we hit submit. So we have now one essay question. Now we have one multiple choice question. And you can keep adding more all the different varieties so you can have all different kind of questions in one test so absolutely that can be done any other question i have a, see another question here from kyoko actually that she asked a while ago about um having a weekly quiz every week 20 minutes max and was, she was thinking of giving it um through a zoom meeting but is that a waste of time and would you do it uh, if you want to give quiz and um, so you want to give uh, through Zoom, why? Why you want to give through? Uh, you can. Kyoko, you can un unmute yourself and unmute, ask. Unmute everybody. It's okay. So, so, this is just a very general question, but yeah, it's a good question. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. So it sounds like you giving the exam for a timed um, at certain time, like Sunday night, mm -hmm. instead of giving it in front of you, right? Sort of. Yes, that's correct. Because I was not sure what everybody's doing because I was going to do, this is a language class and I wanted to, mm -hmm. but I wanted to sort of like see students taking an exam in front of me, but I guess it's not necessary. Yeah, because that is a problem. That is what I was talking about in my PowerPoint uh, that uh, in an online class, currently in our school, we don't have online proctoring options. 
Mm-hmm. So if you do, if we did have the online proctoring option, you don't have to worry about it. Online proctor services company will take care of it. You don't have to worry about that part. But we don't have it right now. We will we will work on it, but at present we don't. So that's why, um, you know, I mentioned that whatever we have in here that is not that effective, but that is what we can do as of this point. But we definitely want to talk about it in the long run. Yes. And really, you couldn't use Zoom to proctor, could you? I think I actually was exploring, um, you know, reading some articles. Uh, there is a way, but you know, uh, then you, how many students, uh, you know, you can, mm-hmm. I mean, it will be hard. Like, for example, let us, you know, uh, look at our screen, you know, uh, if we have participants, you know, yeah. some people might not have the video, some people have the video. That same problem can also come in online proctoring, but the students are told in advance, you know, that they have to, if they take that class, they have to have the video uh, and audio availabilities for taking the test because you know otherwise they will not be able to do the online program so that is important as an instructor you can kind of try to do it but it will be too much maybe for you you know sometimes it is hard to manage you know if you have a large class even anything more than 15 can be uh, anything more than 10 can quickly become overwhelming you know Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, I've seen also that we have two of our colleagues from the Office for Students with Disabilities with us today. Yeah. Um, and maybe we could address issues around accommodations and testing in this environment. Yes. And also, Johnny and Astrid, please feel free to uh, share information or ask questions or contribute whatever you'd like to. Uh-huh. So regarding the accommodation, as I, as I was showing uh, before, when you create the test, uh, you know, there is a way you can add extra time for one student, uh, you know, who needs accommodation. You can also give an extra attempt if you would like. Um, so yeah, those options are there. Uh, it depends upon what kind of accommodation they will be needing. Mm-hmm. Uh, many times uh, the request I have gotten in the past was they need like, you know, um, more time. Right. So That's I'm usually that. Yeah. Yes, I'm able to do that very easily. Student, uh, the student who need accommodation, they can still take the test just like everybody else, uh, but they will be able to get extra time. But everybody else, you know, will be able to get one hour. But the person who needs extra time, you know, you can absolutely give them extra time. Yes. Great. Thanks. And Johnny and Astrid, do you want to chime in on anything? Feel free to unmute yourselves if you're muted. Oh, maybe Johnny stepped away. Yeah. And right. Astrid, oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So now uh, the test part is done. Anybody has any question about the test? So another another time, test has like two steps. First, you need to create the test. Uh, Richard was asking, how do you give points value to a question? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. So let's do that. So now, as you can see, once I have created the test, it on the right hand side, it shows points 10 and 10. So if you think that this question is no more, you know, no more than five, should not be more than five points, you just uh, change it and then hit submit. You can also make it extra credit. Did you see that? Extra credit? Ah. You can also do that. Yes. Nice. Uh And then uh, let's say this question is, uh, you know, like a short answer. So I would want to give like more points to it. So I can give five points to this, 10 or equal. You can do whatever combination you would like. And when you see the total is coming out here, right? 15. If you change it, if you make it like, uh, if you make it, make it like two, now you will see that the total now has became, that has become 12. So yeah, so you can change, uh, you know, the points according to that. Yeah, so uh that is something you can do so again uh going back to my slide so that i make i, I can make sure that I yes can... please so uh as i showed you that how you can give the exam at a specific day and time to everybody in the class all the students take the exam at the same time so for example you had a face-to-face class on tuesday from 10 30 to 11 30. so you can schedule the time as i showed you uh by selecting those options that everybody should be taking the, the taking the test at the on the on a particular day uh, and a particular time so you can let them know send them an email 
uh, in advance so that they know there will be a test. And then you can time the test. As I showed you, there was an option, 60 minutes. So you can give them whatever time you would like to give. Uh, you make them complete in one sitting. Remember force completion that I was showing you, that is what it means, force completion. Then I also showed you how to randomize the question in the test, which was in the end. Then you can, create. you should be, I mean, I suggest, uh, I'm not saying you should be, <laughs> I'm just suggesting that you can, you should create, I mean, should I, again, I'm saying should, what is wrong with me? And maybe I'm tired. Okay, so uh, what I'm suggesting is that if you create your own questions, then student uh, will not be able to find that on the Google because uh, Google uh, normally will have the questions uh, from the, you know, uh, publisher's uh, test bank. But if you create your own question, it will be hard for them to find it. And uh, you can create a test bank. Uh, for example, if you want to give like 25 questions in a test, then you might want to consider having like 40 questions in the bank so that it can pull out. Oh yeah, I want to show you uh, how to make a pool. I'm glad I remembered that. So how do you make the pool? So to make the pool, again, go to the, you know, this is called as course organization, but in your situation, it will be course tools. It will be instead of organization, it will be course. Underneath that, this is like a very important uh, area in the Blackboard uh, where you see course tools. So go to the alphabetic order, uh, to the test survey and tools, and create a pool. So in the pool, you can import the pool, but that only accept you know specific files. Uh, so if you are just a beginner, I will suggest you know start building it. So you start building it, and let's say this is my first question, something like that. Pool. I mean, sorry, not question. My name of the pool. So pool one. So that is the name of my pool, and then you hit submit. Now my pool is created. Now I start adding the question, just like the way I was adding in a test, the same procedure, let's say multiple answers. So this is my question number one, I wrote something in here. And then uh, this is also a possible answer. I didn't show you that before, uh, but you can also have multiple answers. You know, the one question can have multiple answers. So one can also be right. This can also be right, you know, uh, five is not right. So something like that, zero, and then you hit submit. So this is one of the question in the pool. And then uh, now uh, let us say essay question. Now number two, something in here, and you add that in here. Now, so now you have created the pool. So you go back to the pool. Now you see that there is a pool, right? Now you can add as many questions as you want. Let's say you created a pool that has 50 questions. So why do you want to create the poll? The reason you want to create the poll is because uh, when the student take the test, uh, all the student that doesn't get the same exact question. Although the question will be very similar, but it will not be exactly the same. So uh, that will prevent cheating. How that will prevent cheating is that student will not have the exact same question. It will be similar, but not exactly the same. So now once I created the poll, I cannot just deploy the poll because we can only deploy the test. We cannot deploy the poll. So we will have to go to the test survey and pools and now create a test. So now I'm going to create exam three. So build a test, exam three, and then hit submit. If you want to add description, you can. Now you see reuse questions in here. Now I'm not creating the question anymore because I already have the pool. So I'm going to reuse the question and I'm going to create a random block. So when I create the random block, it will be asking me from where you want to pull the questions. So I only have one pool. If you have more than one pool, it will show you all those pools. So we have only one pool. And then uh, we want to use all the question pools. And then we hit submit. So once we hit the submit, then you can see this thing pops up, right? So out of two questions, let's say you only want to give one question. If you have 50 questions and you want to give 25 to a student, you just type 25. But here we have two just, so we just give one. And then you can assign the points for each question and then you hit OK. So this exam number three that we have created is through the pool. So when you have the pool, then you can have more number of questions than what you want to give. That will avoid potential cheating because all the questions, all the students are not going to get the same exact question, there will be a difference. Although the question can be similar. 
Now you can use multiple pools also. Let me show you another thing. I do that a lot. Um, I apologize. I don't want to confuse you, but uh, I, I have been doing this for a long time. So I have done a lot of testing myself. I'm going to create another pool. So I'm going to build pool number two, and I'm going to you know write some description. I, I will add question, essay. Uh, you can create any kind of question as you know. So this is another one, submit. And I will create another one, essay. You can create, I'm doing essay because as a essay is easy, right? Multiple choice takes forever. So now as, I, as you can see, I have created another pool. So how many pools I have now? Pool one and pool two. Now the test I created before, uh, exam number three, I used a pool. So in the same test, you can use multiple pools. So I have taken one question from pool one. Now I can create another random block and I can use another pool. So I'm, not, I'm now going to use number two and I'm going to use all the questions from there, hit submit. And then as you can see, another random block is showing up. So now you are getting one question from the pool one and one question from pool two. So that way you can say, okay. Now what is, now you might be thinking why there is a need to do that. The, need, the reason to do that is that, for example, when I teach economics, right? So uh, I have a question where I want to, I want the student to calculate consumer price index. It's a math question. So I, uh, in, in one pool, let me go to the pool again, I will show you. So in one pool, what I will do is, I will have the same exact question in one pool, but I'll change the numbers. So the math is different, but the question is the same. So I will pull out, you know, so this, let's say this pool is, you know, I, let me rename that pool. So this is my CPI question. So this is my CPI question. And my other pool is my GDP calculation question. So gross domestic product, I'm going to rename it. Let me know if I'm going way too fast. And you can always ask me question even after. So that is not a problem. So I have two pools. So this pool has two question. This pool has two question. But both the question in this pool are similar. Only the numbers are changed. In this pool also, the questions are uh, similar, but numbers are changed, right? So when I create a test, one question is pulling from this, one question is pulling from this. So two students taking the test, they both have the similar question, but with different numbers. So that is how you can use the pool. So when you create the test, you know, then you can uh, pull the questions from those pools. I think somebody had any question? There are a couple more questions on the chat now. Mm -hmm. um, Johnny asks, how do you prevent students who have double time from cheating? Double time? For accommodations. How that prevents? How, how do you prevent those students that have double the amount of time from cheating? Uh, I'm actually, uh, uh, can you unmute and explain more? What does that mean? Johnny, are you there? Yes. Can you explain what you asked? Okay, I received, I received uh, an email from a, from a professor that says that if, if she gives, she has an exam for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. uh, she gives it for one hour just to get everybody one hour. They cannot go out of the website or anything to go check the answers and then come and put them. Yeah. But if she gives double time to one student, well, that student can go and check um, the go online and look for the answer someplace else and have plenty of time to do the exam. Um, that doesn't take into consideration the, the, uh, the disability of the person or anything like that. She's just concerned about uh, if the time would not be giving that student an opportunity to go out and check answers and check uh, everything before putting the right answer, thereby cheating. So it is, uh, as an instructor, it is up to you how much time you want to give. You don't have no control on that. It is your, no. Yeah. Well, well if, if the class has, say the class has one hour, uh -huh. a student with disability may have um, an accommodation of two hours, double the time. Uh -huh. But that, that doesn't mean that everybody gets two hours. There is a setting that you can do where only that particular student who does need accommodation will be getting that time. Everybody else get one hour and the student who need accommodation will be getting extra time. Everybody yes. can get extra time. Yes, the, the faculty was concerned about 
that extra hour that students with disability has, mm -hmm. um, that the student might use that extra hour to go cheat? Uh, which student, like uh, other students, you mean? No, no, no. The student, the, the student who is the student, I think, Johnny, what you're trying to explain is that the, the concern of the faculty is that if I give any ex student with a particular disability who may require and need more time, how do I prevent that that student by giving, having been given that time, he or she will not use that time to cheat? Yeah, you cannot do that. I'm right. It, it seems a rather complex uh, situation because even when the student does need the time, the faculty uh, would like to do something to prevent that student from, from cheating. Yeah, so I'm, from my understanding, you're saying that that person might be able to abuse, you know, that extra time to cheat. That's what I, yeah, it sounds like that's what that faculty yeah. member was concerned with. Well, yeah. then, you know, that's, that's another thing, you know, unless and until it is a proctoring test, you cannot avoid it. That's why, you know, this is, as I said, Blackboard does provide you tools, but by all means, you know, uh, this is not going to prevent cheating. This might prevent like maybe, you know, maybe 20, maybe 40%, uh, you know, but there is no way. How you can, how you can stop, you know, students from Googling? There is no uh, tool that we have, you know, available that can prevent that. How do we... And know that it's the same the main my main question other than everything else google cheating and everything how do we know is the same student taking the test we don't even know that is not even it is only online proctoring you know i'm not promoting it but i find any other solution for that otherwise identity problem is the one of the biggest concern you know and that we need to address because it is not fair that face-to-face -face students come in uh, into the campus, you know, not for this situation, I'm talking overall, and they take the test in front of the professors and the online student get to take without any professor, you know, in their home, open book, open notes, open Google, you know, open help from anybody. They can also outsource it to some you know? So, yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, this Blackboard provides us some tools, but unfortunately, they are, they are not enough. Absolutely. No, nowhere, I mean, absolutely not. So that's why the, uh, the universities that are setting high, high standards for their online program, they already are doing this online proctoring for many years, many, many years. And uh, those uh, universities who are not taking it seriously, they are having accreditation issues. They, are they might lose their courses, online courses, they, may, they might lose their program. But at this point, you know, because we are in a, this situation where the, you know, the student didn't sign up, you know, for online class, they signed up for face to face class, many of them. So this is an unusual situation. But if you do want to continue teaching online, you know, we do want to do something about it. But because I don't think it is fair, you know, uh, that, you know, online students get all those, you know, benefits. Uh, and nobody is even, uh, you can make sure that it's the same student taking the test. So yeah, so at this point, you know, um, I'm not saying that all of our students are cheating, but you know, method. And I, I, I know a case where a student, you know, started online student, started the test, posted the entire test on check.com. And they provide the answers on demand, believe it or not. They promise that they will send the answer within two hours. So if your test is two hours long, that person will be get the answer from the tutor. So all he did was he copied all the answers from the tutor and pasted it and submitted it. The way we know was because I was able to use the safe assign. You know, safe assign is uh, another tool uh, for written assignment that you can use. Mm -hmm. And then I went to, and if you go to check website, you have to actually create an account to be able to see if your question, all the homeworks, you know, that was created, all the discussion board question that was created, it was all there. You might be surprised the question that you have created yourself, the assignment that you have created yourself. Student must have posted, you know, I'm not saying every student must have done that. There are students who go to that extent who will post everything that you give uh, that they should be doing of their own without any help. They have posted there on these websites and got the answers from those tutors and did nothing of their own. All they did was paying to those people, uh, getting the answers from them and submitting it to you. So, yeah, so this is like, you know, really very concerning uh, and that has to be addressed especially in the online classes, you know, because if we really want to be at par, you know, we want to give the same kind of treatment. We want to give uh, this, ensure the same fairness in the, both the platforms. 
So let me show you uh, any other question in the meanwhile. Um, I think Kyoko was asking how points are given to an essay question. Okay, let's do that. So let me go to like one of these exams. So I think an example I created a lot of, or oh, that was the, uh, the where I created the pool, right? Yes. So I had two questions. This is multiple choice question, and this is uh, the essay or short answer or essay, let's say this essay one. So just, you know, as you can see on the right hand side, it is very small. Is it bigger now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the point. So you can adjust. If you want this to be, essay question to be 30 points or 25 points, you can just, uh, write the number of points you would like to give and hit submit. That's all you need to do. So all you need to do is on the, uh, once you prepare the question on the right hand side, there will be points. So you just, uh, you know, click there and then change whatever point you would like to give, like 40 now. And then say okay. That's all you need to do. I was just actually, sorry, I was just asking about the answers. Because the others are very easy, multiple choice that yes. it's automatically um, graded, right? But how do you give the 25 points or 10 points for the essay question? So you mean uh, when you start grading it? No, answers. When you start grading? When you start grading, grading yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So when you, uh, in that situation, you will be going to the grade center and you will be clicking on need grading. Okay, so you have to, okay. Yeah, so this is what you get right now because if this course doesn't have any students, mm. but in your course you will have the students, so you will get a list of all the students. So you will start grading. So you there will be a drop down. You click on that, and it will ask you you want to grade this student or all the students. So you can hit this student or all the students, and then it will show you their assignment or their answers, and then you grade that. That is where you get it. Needs grading. So again, go to the grade center and the needs grading. So that is where you get this page. Does that answer your question? Oh, you know what? Okay, let me just come back to that. Okay. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm talking about particular section of the test. Mm -hmm. You give essay question, mm -hmm. but how do you know that student got the right answer? So you have to write the example of the responses. That's what I was asking. Manually graded. Yes, I know what you mean now. Yeah. So for the multiple choice, it will be automatically graded. But for the essay question, absolutely, you will have to go and grade manually. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. You have to grade, grade manually, yes. I see. But you can provide a general feedback so that you don't have to provide the feedback to every, every student. Mm -hmm. You can uh, give a general feedback. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, please. So I see that we're at the end of our hour now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will be posting this online. So Nitu gave us a lot of information. Um, and you'll, if you want to go back over it, we'll have the link available. So it might be easier to absorb some of it. Um, and um, thank you all for coming today. Thank you so much, Nitu. Um, you've been One doing... last thing, uh, Priscilla, Richard wanted to, uh, you know, see, uh, Richard, are you still there? Richard? Richard is still there? She's I still on the list. I Richard, are you there? Okay. Yes, I please unmute later. yourself. So unmute I'm yourself, for you. Richard. Right now, uh, almost uh, the time is ending and I'm going to just show her. She, want, she was asking me Blackboard Collaborate. So we click on Blackboard Collaborate. So once you are there, you see this course room, right? This is available. Yes. So mm -hmm. you, you don't even have to create a session. You can just go there, click mm -hmm. in there, and you just join the course. See, I didn't create. Oh, I see. I see. It's always on. You I just see. become available there and let the student know that you are available at that time. It's like your virtual office hours, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, However, if you create a session, then you can start recording and that session is recorded if the student wants to, let's see the class lesson. Sometime. Yes. yes, you can record that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see uh, if I can do that. So this is, I'm session, I'm not creating the session, but I'm creating this thing. So I'm joining it. Hmm. And there are various options. Uh, so I'm going to allow that. So you have all these settings here. Right. And you have some settings here. 
uh, that we can share. So okay. Just, uh, you know, yeah. No, this has been a great session and you know, thanks to you for showing in detail how to make a test of different type of questions, assigned points. Uh, I, I am really new to this. So it has been really, very helpful. And you know, with Pablo chatting in between and mm -hmm. answering questions, uh, I just have a, a little bit sort of a complicated question. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I teach anatomy, physiology, a uh, lab part of the course. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that course, we do practical exams wherein, you know, uh, you have a station with two questions displayed on a model mm -hmm. and students come uh, turn by turn. Uh, it's a continuous exam. They get one minute to answer two questions on a station. So there are 25 such stations. The whole exam is roughly for one hour. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in order to, you know, sort of copy it into the online format, I was playing over the weekend using Blackboard Collaborate mm -hmm. and I created a PowerPoint file where on every slide I put a model picture mm -hmm. and I display two questions mm -hmm. and then in PowerPoint you can set transition of the slide based on a timer mm -hmm. so you know if you do in the slideshow mode the slide uh, will progress to the next slide every one minute mm -hmm. and then uh, on Blackboard Collaborate uh, you know if you share your screen with the students so you can actually do a real-time practical exam online oh, absolutely. right absolutely. Uh, so it, and I had my husband sitting in a distant location or a separate computer <laughs> acting as a student yeah. and uh, it seemed to be working. So in the department, I was working on this little bit because I was asked by the chair and the uh, course coordinator to come up with the strategy, you know, on how to conduct the online exam for the laboratory classes. That's very good. That's a very good idea. So in that regard, Neetu, then, uh, you know, uh, in Blackboard Collaborate, mm -hmm. I was seeing... Uh, that you can also check in the option of private chat because you know uh, if the students have to write their answers in real time mm -hmm. then if they write their answers on everyone on the chat then they all see the answers mm -hmm. but if you choose the option of private chat then they cannot chat with each other that's very good right very good. Um, uh, but then uh, I was wondering and uh, you know and I think I was asking Pablo he was trying to answer you know I know it's pretty hectic for all of us if you start recording the session only the everyone chat gets recorded right? Not the, private chat. the private chats don't get recorded so as a solution i thought that you know usually also during a in-person exam we ask students after one hour to take a break and leave the lab the classroom mm. so i was thinking on the online we can announce that when the time for last question is over okay now all of you can leave the session there'll be a 15 minutes break um but the moderator or the instructor of the class can still be on the session mm -hmm. and can open up a word file mm -hmm. to copy all the private chats mm -hmm. of the student which has the answers mm -hmm. um, so this is a way to do it but i i don't know you guys are expert if there is some other way that we can save student answers or they can be submitted directly through blackboard i just mm -hmm. was wondering very good. Thank you for sharing that. Excellent. Those are very good suggestions. I didn't even think about those suggestions. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. One final thing I would like to just add is that, you know, because this has been re like a really difficult time for the student as well. Right. So, you know, just, you know, we do want to maintain the academic integrity. Uh, you know, uh, we want to maintain those standards, you know. Mm -hmm. But just, uh, you know, I would like to, you know, just to suggest to keep in mind, you know, students also have like a lot of issues going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's okay to give them extra credit and maybe, you know, don't worry too much and be kind to yourself too, you know, because it is also overwhelming to the professors, you know. Yeah, the only thing uh, is in this course, you know, we run like some 34 sections and students compete to get into health science major. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the coordinator is very concerned with cheating issues uh, during, you know, the person, you know, I cannot accept cheating at all. Right. That's why, you know, I am like a pro of online proctoring. <laughs> so that's why I was thinking, you know, if it's a real time exam and like you very rightly said, we cannot do online proctoring, yeah. but in the beginning, before the exam begins, if they all can show their video yes. and we can see, you know, that the backgrounds are different, they are not sitting together or something, mm -hmm. then they get just one minute to write the answer. You know, there's no time to text also each other and ask. Yeah. So that's the best we could do to avoid cheating right in the current situation that's right. um 
and and you know like, i don't know if johnny nelson is uh, still uh, in in our session right now i i wanted to ask him that you know if let's say we conduct the exam in this format for all the class but there is a student with a disability then is the disability office going to organize uh, online exams for such students how will these students give the exam uh, during the current session yeah because usually you know we send them to the uh, disability office and that office organizes these bone and muscle practical exams for the students with disability but now uh, the students cannot go in person to the disability office also you know the the disease is pretty contagious all in person sessions are cancelled so the disability office might have also have to look into organizing online exams right there is a comment that says on many programs there are ways to change the background option that could be problematic what do you mean by background option can you please explain oh it went back or oh, it went to video it's like it's playing back well um the disability office normally is supposed to distract the students on behalf of the professor so right. if uh, um the only thing is you just provide them we provide them with the accommodation because the professor doesn't have enough time or the space to provide that individually to that student so that's why we do that mm -hmm. now if um the the test is being given um online to everybody else most likely the only accommodation the students with disability will need is to extend the time okay um say people have two minutes per session you mm -hmm. could extend it to three minutes or four minutes per session per station um as they go on the practical not that you give them more opportunities to do anything because they're going to take as much as long to think and making sure they, they get the right answer and um in my experience students who have more time especially in those kind of situations they tend to go back because they have so much time to go back and clean up or erase good answers and put bad answers <laughs> so that's why i don't um really really attach much importance to the to the, the fact that students might be cheating when they are in this online situation right. because they don't know when the time is going to be expiring on them. Mm. No, yeah. Thank you, Johnny, for joining in and actually answering this question. So uh, I think uh, uh, for such cases, maybe we can organize a separate online exam with more yes. time per slide, right? Exactly. And yeah, you and uh, all others are absolutely right that right, I think right now we not, do not worry so much about cheating and students going back to questions. Uh, I think we have to look into how to conduct these courses and exams right now. Um, and with all the advice that we are getting from the experts, we can just try to do our best, right? Yeah, I actually requ uh, requested Priscilla and Pablo maybe having a separate, you know, workshop, a webinar on this topic, uh, mm -hmm. you know for the you know special accommodation situation where yes i think we definitely should do that yeah because a lot of questions came up because based on that topic so mm -hmm. maybe considering something like that yeah absolutely yeah. Okay. okay thank you very much for answering all my questions <laughs> all of you thank you everyone. Well, pablo johnny thank, and you. Thank, thank you everyone thank you so much oh you're welcome bye Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Nitu. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.